This video provides an overview of circumferential pulmonary vein radiofrequency catheter ablation for atrial fibrillation. This video is a supplement to the JAMA article, Catheter Ablation Therapy for Supraventricular Arrhythmias by Joseph E. Marine. Atrial fibrillation is the most common sustained arrhythmia affecting over 2 million people in the United States. Symptoms may include palpitations, dizziness, chest discomfort, fatigue, and shortness of breath. Atrial fibrillation is also an important cause of stroke. Multiple factors may trigger atrial fibrillation in susceptible individuals, including premature atrial depolarization and focal atrial tachycardia originating in the pulmonary veins. Circumferential pulmonary vein radiofrequency ablation disrupts transmission of electrical activity from arrhythmogenic foci in the pulmonary veins. Other mechanisms by which the procedure may prevent atrial fibrillation include ablation of autonomic ganglia, which are located near the ostea of the pulmonary veins, and disruption of sites of microreentry. Although the best results of ablation therapy are obtained in patients with paroxysmal atrial fibrillation, this strategy is also commonly used for the treatment of persistent atrial fibrillation. A three-dimensional reconstruction of the heart is generated from cardiac computed tomography or magnetic resonance imaging data using electrical anatomical mapping software. Once in the electrophysiology laboratory, vascular access is typically obtained through the femoral vein. The right internal jugular vein is sometimes used as an alternative. A diagnostic multipolar electrode catheter is placed into the patient's coronary sinus to permit pacing and recording of electrical activity in the left atrium. Two transeptal punctures are performed and sheaths are advanced into the left atrium. A hollow injecting catheter is placed into each of the pulmonary veins and contrast is injected to outline the size and shapes of the veins. Fluoroscopy is used intermittently throughout the procedure to guide catheter placement, access to the left atrium, and manipulation of the mapping and ablation catheters within the heart. An ablation catheter is introduced and used to tag a series of anatomical reference points on the posterior left atrium and the pulmonary veins proper. These points together create a basic anatomical outline that is then used to register the true anatomical position of the catheter within the three-dimensional reconstruction generated from the patient's CT data. An assistant at the computer workstation integrates this basic outline with the three-dimensional reconstruction, subsequently allowing the operator to navigate inside a virtual shell of the patient's left atrium. Now navigating inside the three-dimensional reconstruction with occasional reference to fluoroscopic images, the operator performs a series of point ablation lesions in circles outside the pulmonary veins. This is primarily done using anatomical references, although the electrogram from the ablation catheter itself is monitored. Point ablation lesions can be applied in any sequence, but typically a large ablation ring is first made around both the left superior pulmonary vein and left inferior pulmonary vein, followed by another large ring around the right superior pulmonary vein and right inferior pulmonary vein. Data points are added onto the three-dimensional reconstruction display as the procedure progresses. After the initial ablation circles are completed, the circular mapping catheter is placed sequentially into each of the pulmonary veins to check for electrical isolation. The circular mapping catheter is comprised of electrode pairs that detect electrical activity at specific locations recorded on an electrogram. If the electrogram shows residual electrical connections between the vein and the left atrium, then additional radiofrequency current is applied at these sites. On the electrogram, sudden loss of electrical activity or dissociation from the left atrial activity indicates that the vein has been successfully isolated. The electrical activity in each pulmonary vein is then rechecked over a 30 to 60 minute waiting period to ensure persistent isolation.